A UV map gives you control over the placement and scale of the textures of your mesh. If the UV map is missing, chances are your textures look wrong. So today we will be creating a UV map in Blender and we will be using the grass foliage which we created in one of my previous videos. We will also create and add a texture so the foliage isn't just plain green anymore. And finally, we will be adding a normal map which will make the surface look three-dimensional. In the description you will find a link to the video where you can see how to create the mesh from scratch, but you can also just download the finished FBX file, the texture and the normal map, if you prefer to just follow along. Let's go to Blender and open up the file with our grass mesh. If you are using my FBX file, you will need to go to File, Import, Autodesk FBX and you should get the same result. If you're not in edit mode, make sure to switch to edit mode by clicking on it in the list at the bottom of the window. Next, we will have to select the whole mesh, since we'd like to create UV maps for the whole mesh and not just parts of it. Pressing A on your keyboard will select or deselect everything. Make sure the whole mesh is selected. We can then press U for UV map and we will get the UV map menu. I might explain the different options in a separate video, but for now we just click on unwrap to create the simplest possible UV map. At first it looks as if nothing's happened, but in the background Blender actually created a UV map from our mesh. If you go down to the very corner of your window you will find a small icon with a cube. This means that we are in the 3D editor at the moment. If you click on it, you will get a list with different editors. And here we will find and click on UV image editor. And here it is, the UV map. It shouldn't be hard to see that these are the grass plates. Just like in the 3D edit mode, you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel and you can scale and rotate elements with S or R. Also just like in edit mode, you have a number of sub modes at the bottom of the window. You can choose to work with single modes, edges or faces and there is one extra mode called island select mode. One island on the UV map is in this case, one grass blade or one leaf. Its placement defines which part of the texture, which is basically that grey square you see, is shown on that part of the mesh. But the thing is, we don't want to have a different part of the texture on each of the leaves. We want them to all look the same, so all getting the exact same part of the texture. This means we will have to stack them all on top of each other by moving and scaling them. So, choose the island select mode, scale the four small islands up by pressing S and then when they're all the same size, stack them on top of each other. By the way, when creating a mesh like this from scratch, it's easier to create the UV map when you're done with the first grass blade or leaf. Then when you copy it, the UV map will be copied too. When you're done, select all of the islands by pressing A, maybe twice, and then moving the whole stack to the center of the square. If you just drag in it, then you will only get the top one. So you will have to press T on your keyboard to get the menu on the left side and then click on Translate. Translate is the same as Move. I also like to scale my islands on the x-axis at least a little bit to get more room for the texture later on. Now, I don't really need such a big texture. Just to see how much space I need, I will go to the very bottom of the window and click on the plus sign right next to where it says image. 
In the window for the size, I will keep the height, but I will enter 512 pixels for the width. So now you can see a black area, which represents the size of my texture. What I'd like to do now is taking a screenshot of the UV map, just so I can get an ID where my faces are later on when creating the image file for the texture. Since I'm on a Mac, I will press Shift, Command, 4, and I get to clip a part of the screen. On Windows, you can use the snipping tool. I will open up the screenshot in GIMP. Of course, you can use Photoshop or whatever you prefer and scale it to exactly 512 times 1024 pixels. Then create your texture. How you do it is completely up to you. You can take a picture of your house plant, find a picture of a leaf online, or do as I do and just paint an interesting pattern. I like to keep a transparent layer with the UV map while painting. When I'm done, I make it invisible and then export my texture and call it something with underline D at the end. That's because the base color is also called the diffuse map and it's best practice to add the matching letter in the file name. We will now import the texture by dragging it into Unreal Engine's content browser and then do the same with the new version of the grass mesh, which, as you know, has a UV map now. If you're using the same file name, the mesh will simply be replaced. If you're creating a new asset, you will have to open it up and assign the grass material, which we made in my first video. If you don't have any material yet, you can pause here and create a new one. There is a link to a screenshot for copying in the description of this video. Now let's open up our grass material. So far we've used a plain green color for the base color, but now we want to replace it with our texture. So we delete the color node. We then right click on the empty space and start typing texture. You click on texture sample or simply hit enter. In the details of the new node, you will have to find and assign our new diffuse map, so the texture we just imported. Last but not least, we will plug the RGB output of the texture sample into the base color of the material and save. And here's the mesh. As you can see, the texture is visible now and since we have a nice UV map, the placement on the leaves is spot on. See the foliage that's already placed here? This is the old mesh, which doesn't have a UV map. Even though it's using the exact same material, it doesn't look right. Now, just to compare, let's place the new mesh here. Nice. There's only one thing missing, and that is a normal map. A normal map is a special kind of texture, which the engine can can use for creating a three-dimensional surface effect. For my part, I will start by drawing a bump map in GIMP. Basically, I'm creating a grayscale image where the light areas will be sticking more out and the dark areas will be flat. But don't worry if you're not good at creating this kind of thing manually. If you're working with a photo or a free texture, there are a number of tools that can turn these into normal maps automatically. The results are not always great, but in many cases they will do just fine. I'm using a tool called Crazy Bump to turn my bump map into a normal map. Photoshop can create normal maps and GIMP has an add-on for it too. In the description of the video, I also provide a link to a free tool which you can use online in your browser. Save your normal map and call it something with the letter N at the end. Again, this is best practice for naming normal maps. The rest is pretty simple now. We import the normal map, just like we did with the first texture, the diffuse map. 
Then in the material, we add another texture sample node. Again, right click, start typing texture, find texture sample or hit enter. In the details, you can see that Unreal Engine actually found my normal map automatically because of the name. If that's not the case for you, just make sure to assign it here. Then plug the RGB output of the new node into the normal input of the material and save. Already now you can see the effect of the normal map in the preview. Where the light hits the surface, you can see the little bumps that I've added. And when we hop over to our foliage, you can see that the texture has this nice three-dimensional effect now. And that's it. If you have questions, please visit us on ko-fi slash vrfantasy or deviantart slash vrfantasy. Have a great day and until next time.